Hey everyone, I'm Gifted Tucker and I'm bringing you my opinion and review of the previous gen release, Assassin's Creed Rogue. The question is, with the two Assassin's Creeds launching on the exact same day, is it worth checking out the less superior of the two? As you'll soon find out in my review, not really. Since the selling point of this game is the fact that you're an assassin turned Templar, let's start with the story first. The game begins with Master Assassin Achilles, yes the guy from Assassin's Creed 3, sending you to find a piece of Eden. As you can see, things don't go so well and you end up causing an earthquake that destroys an entire city. Now this is honestly where the game started to lose me. Upon returning to the homestead, it turns out that Achilles not only knew the danger, but decided that it was worth the cost to try and obtain a precursor item. The assassins then proceed to try and kill you because you don't agree with them. Basically what they decided to do was instead of you turning evil and joining the Templars, they just made the assassins the evil faction of the game. Along with the story just falling flat, they also decided to add cameos from all the major players of Assassin's Creed 3 and Black Flag. Even though some don't have any real purpose, they threw them in anyways. They treat Franklin as the Da Vinci in this game. He even goes so far as to make you a grenade launcher. Now, I don't claim to be a historian or anything, but I'm pretty fucking sure good old Ben Franklin did not invent the underbelly grenade launcher. But moving on to new features that don't hurt my brain, there are some gorgeous new winter effects in the high seas, which are a nice change of pace from the tropical climates of Black Flag. You even sail through blizzards sometimes, but unfortunately they seem like scripted events in the story because I never really found them just sailing around. With the snowy climate also comes two new features to the sea. Icebergs, which can be destroyed to damage smaller vessels, and ice sheets. While ice sheets don't do much of anything, they added to the immersion of the game and I really enjoy the small things. Sailing around the world and destroying enemy ships is still the main focus of the game, and it's still very entertaining. There are a few changes to the sailing that I enjoy, such as ship upgrades now being available in your quarters, and the naval campaign receiving a few beneficial tweaks. Another new addition is of derelict ships. You have just one minute to board, loot, and escape before it explodes. At first these are fun and challenging, but after the 10th ship, it just becomes tedious. With these new features also comes a few changes in the opposite direction of progress. For instance, the open world sailing, it's now gone. It's been replaced by several smaller bodies of water that you have to zone into. And for some reason, the game is practically muted when you travel at full speed. Combat on land is still the same as Black Flag. The only difference is that instead of two swords, you just have a sword and a dagger. It's still fluid and fun, but the audio still has some problems lining up correctly at times. And I know you guys can't tell just from watching a video, but there's still no vibration during most of the game, and it really takes away from the immersion of the experience, and you guys know how much I like immersion. Speaking of land combat, can you guess the main force you fight in the streets? If you guessed assassins, you're half right. Technically you fight a gang of criminals that are led by the assassins. Yeah, you guys remember from all of the games where the assassins are like the mob? Oh wait, I don't fucking remember that. The assassins are a secret organization for the good of humanity, so why the fuck are they extorting shop owners and flying their flags everywhere? Honestly though, this game can hardly even be considered a spin-off like Brotherhood or Revelations. Shit, it's not even good enough to be considered DLC for Black Flag. But for full retail price, what you get is some half-baked, fanfiction-esque, nonsensical dribble that simply connects Black Flag to Assassin's Creed 3. Ubisoft Sophia was in charge of this title, and it seemed like they phoned it all in. I have been a fan of every game in this series. I even fly the black flag in my room for fuck's sake. I tried looking for anything good in this newest entry, and while there are a few new additions, the utter lack of polish on top of the reduction in content, this game isn't even worth a try. Unity may have its technical bugs, but that is clearly the true Assassin's Creed sequel this year. And speaking of Unity, there is a little tie-in at the end, but it seems like Rogue thought of this idea after Unity was already finished, because it's a one-way connection. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the game. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my assessment. I would love to know what the other fans of the series think. And don't forget to hit the like button and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and here on YouTube. The links are in the description below. I'm your host, Gifted Tucker, and I will see you all next time. What? Oh my god, that was awesome.